Imagine this scenario. You're 30 years old and you lose your sense of hearing. But then doctors tell you that you may have the chance to get it back. It sounds like a good thing, right? Well, for Dawn, making the decision was a bit more complicated. I lost my hearing about 15 years ago. We knew that her hearing loss was as bad as it was when we would be talking to her and she would turn and walk away. That's when we really noticed that there was a serious problem. When I was 30, I made my first appointment to have my hearing check. I realized that I had profound hearing loss. And I had lost speech recognition, so hearing aids have never been an option for me. Communicating for me is extremely exhausting. I communicate with people by reading lips. It's almost impossible for me to follow a conversation. In a group, I'm lost very fast. I have no idea what anybody's saying is I'm completely unable to focus in here right now. <laughs> It's very difficult for me to be in large groups, so I tend to stay with a small group of people that I'm comfortable with. The first time I met with Dr. Slattery was two years ago, and he told me that I was a candidate for the cochlear implant. It was very hard to make the decision to have the surgery. It took a lot of influence from my family. I'm not afraid of the surgery. I'm more afraid of hearing. I've never heard my eight-year-old son's voice. In my mind, I can hear my son's voice, but I know that I don't hear it. So maybe I'm afraid of what I will hear compared to what my brain tells me that I hear. Dawn's activation went fantastic. She's gonna leave here soon to go meet her son and hear his voice for the first time. I still haven't spoken to my youngest son, and so I'm looking forward to hearing him. She never heard my voice. I'm just really excited that she could finally hear. I'm nervous. I'm hopeful, but I'm also afraid. I guess I still have that fear of, I'm not gonna hear him. Hey, Mom, could you hear me? Yes. <laughs> Now you can talk and I can hear you. I love you. Yeah, I love you too. Are you happy that I can hear you? Yes. <laughs> now she can finally hear me and I'm not silent anymore. We're here with house clinic neurotologist Dr. William Slattery along with Dawn and her sons Asher and Patterson. You know, it's ironic that words are what brought everyone here to tears and you to tears and yet I'm speechless <laughs> because I cannot even imagine what it's like to hear your old son's voice for the first time. It, I mean, it, it, it was overwhelming. I'm speechless. I mean, I just, to hear both of them, to hear, I mean, even to hear my own voice, um, it's, it's, it's far greater than I could have ever expected. Just to hear a word was the most amazing thing I have ever experienced. So, Ashton Patterson, what's it like for your mom to be able to hear you guys say things and hear your voice? It's like good that I could finally hear, like that you could hear. Just like very cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing because you know, she never you know heard me since I was two. So you know, it's just the world that you're living in. You never really know what you're missing. So it's just really amazing to actually know what it's like to actually you know have her hear me. Now you have to be careful what you say, though. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you realize that, right? And Dr. Slattery. It just seems to me that so many advances have been made in terms of giving someone like Don the choice, the option to potentially hear again. Yeah, the cochlear implant's amazing. I mean, the devices over the last couple of years have gotten smaller, thinner, faster. Uh, there's, I think we have some pictures to actually show you what some of the devices looked like back in the 80s. They had cables that went up to the ear. And in the 90s, it became a little bit smaller box. For those of you who remember what a Walkman looked like, it was kind of like a Walkman on the that you wear on the side, but you saw these cables that had to come up to the ear. And now we have this small device, similar to what Dawn has, it fits all up on, uh, inside the ear. And this is a demonstration of what one looks like. This is what Dawn has, so it has a microphone, and then this cable goes into the uh, inner ear. And the part that we're stimulating is actually the cochlear, the inner ear. And then this is the actual device or the implant that's put inside Dawn. And the significance that I'd like to point out is 
you'll see at the very bottom of this, there's a little coil. And that little coil is actually the size of the inner ear. Now that coil, which you can't see very well, but it's actually about the size of your nail on your, on your pinky finger. That's how small it is. So in this animation, you see a normal ear. Sound comes in and vibrates the pink eardrum, which vibrates the hearing bones. That sends a sound wave into the inner ear where there's 15,000 little hair cells represented by the little blue dots. And that transmits a sound wave via the ear nerve into the brain. And that's how we normally hear. Now, if you have a disease such as Dawn has, and there's a problem with the inner ear, the cochlear implant system is meant to bypass that. So we have the internal device, which is implanted. You saw the surgery of that underneath the skin. There's this external part that has the battery and microphone. And then there's an electric cable that goes down into the inner ear where there's 22 little electrodes. And those electrodes actually stimulate the hearing nerve to allow simulation of near normal hearing. Dr. Slattery, was it a big advantage for Dawn, the fact that she had hearing previously? Well, when you have hearing previously, patients do much better because the brain has already learned how to hear, how to interpret sound. Now, we actually implant these in children who are born deaf as young as 12 months of age. And so it can actually be used for these deaf children. And the amazing thing is these deaf children also develop speech and language skills that's almost near normal. Really quickly before we go to break, people at home who may be watching this, who know someone who's hearing impaired, who would this be appropriate for? So cochlear implant is appropriate for someone who can no longer receive benefit from a hearing aid. Uh, patient, uh, people who can't talk on the telephone with their hearing aid, those are individuals who are good candidates to look into a cochlear implant.